in life. There was nothing my father liked more than being the center of attention. And so he would be delighted by this evening's tribute. And for his family and friends who miss him so much, it is such a joy to have his extraordinary contribution celebrated tonight. And what a place for it. NASA Ames, this amazing center of research in science and aviation, now celebrating its 80th anniversary. They were doing advanced innovation in tech here long before Silicon Valley became the center of the universe. Condensed matter physics is extremely difficult. It's uh, largely because of the almost inconceivable number of states that bulk matter could be in simultaneously. It took nearly 50 years from the discovery of superconductivity until it was understood mathematically. And high temperature superconductors still are not understood mathematically. Our next laureates mathematically described and predicted a new class of materials a couple of years before they were physically observed. And these materials are called topological insulators. Uh, they're amazing not only because their surface is a conductor while the interior is an insulator, but because of how robust they are to broad swaths of perturbations. There's a little bit of a difference between the two of us, which I think helps make us a good team. I tend to be a little bit more driven by abstract theoretical ideas, and Gene tends to be a little bit more grounded. That's actually a very, <laughs> that's actually a very true statement. A good fraction of my work takes a cue from experiment. It's not either explained to my satisfaction or I think the explanation out there is really not right. With the discovery of topological insulators, the thing that's interesting about them is they have this very special kind of electrical conductor. It doesn't conduct electricity on the inside, but on the boundary, on the edge, it does conduct electricity. It's like a one-way street for the electrons. So I posed myself a thought experiment. If I was an electron riding along this edge and I approach a region where there's some dirt and disorder, what could happen? So there are only two possibilities. Either you could go through it or you could bounce back. And what I realized is that there's a very special symmetry which makes it so that the probability for bouncing backwards is zero. Generally, there's two kinds of applications when you have a new material like this. And one is trying to sort of substitute them into known architectures and make them work better. But I think the real payoff is that you might build things that don't follow the established architectures. There's an area now known as like topological mechanics. It's when you make lattice structures and make them behave in weird ways. Topological photonics is a similar thing. You direct the flow of light. One idea that would be a game changer is making a quantum computer. If you do make a quantum computer, that is not a marginal change, okay? There's a new language, a new framework that allows you to approach a whole new set of problems. To me, that's the most exciting thing. All these materials were sort of waiting around in plain sight. People didn't know the right questions to ask. It was like a treasure that was waiting to be uh, uncovered. For new ideas leading to the prediction of a new class of materials that conduct electricity only on their surface. The Breakthrough Prize in Fundamental Physics is awarded to Charles Kane and Eugene Moulet. Charles Kane grew up in the college town of Iowa City, where his father was a professor in engineering. Eugene Malik says that back in high school, his physics teacher helped inspire his interest in science. I'd like to thank the electrons. <laughs> Electronic materials can do the most amazing things. They're a foundation for technology but they're also a window into the fundamental ways that matter can arrange itself. It's been my greatest honor to play a part in understanding and predicting some of that, but I'd also like to acknowledge the collective efforts of a broader community of scientists that made these new generations of electronic materials come to life. Thank you.
So first of all, I want to congratulate my uh, colleagues and, uh, and collaborators whose outstanding work over the last 13 years has really led to the rapid development of this field. It's been really uh, uh, remarkable. Um, I'm also very proud that our own work was carried out at the University of Pennsylvania. This is an institution that was established by Benjamin Franklin for, in his words, the pursuit of those things that are likely to be most useful and most ornamental. And that is, and that is exactly the idea behind this subject. Thank you.